that suddenly they came upon a tiny clay which seemed almost magical. For it was Christmas Eve, and the woodland animals were all decorating for their big celebration. They knew Santa was to come that night, and they wanted everything to be just right. Hocus, speak to the animals. See if they won't all pitch in and build a fire for Karen. away from the glen, where the fire wouldn't catch on to the tree. Soon there was a spark, and in almost no time, a splendid fire was crackling away. Frosty was careful to stay far away from the flame. Focus. We've got to find someone to help Karen get home before she freezes. And me to the North Pole before I melt. But who? No, not the Marines. No, not the President of the United States. Oh, they were both swell ideas, but we've got to find someone nearby. Santa Claus. That's a great idea. Why didn't I think of that before? Hocus, you go back with the animals. And when Santa comes, you bring him right here. Understand? Hurry now. And so Frosty kept a silent vigil waiting patiently all through the night until Santa would arrive. But suddenly... <gasps> oh, a campfire. Well, isn't that all snug and comfy? <laughs> <sighs> no, don't. Now, give me that hat or else. Or else what? Uh, well, don't bother me with details. Give me that hat. <clears throat> Get on my shoulders, Karen. You see, Frosty, since he was made of snow and snow, was the fastest belly whopper in the world. And old Professor Hickel was some far out distant. Now it was Frosty's good fortune that right at the bottom of the hill was a tiny greenhouse used to grow precious tropical poinsettias for Christmas. It's got to be all warm and snug inside for those Christmas flowers to grow so beautiful. Let's go in. Oh, but, but you will melt. Just a little. I'll only stay inside for a minute. Besides, I've been meaning to take off a little weight anyway. Whew. Stay in here much longer and I'll really make a splash in the world. <laughs> now I've got you. And the minute you're all melted, the hat will be mine. <laughs> Santa had arrived, but was it too late? Hocus explained the situation to Santa, who, as you know, speaks a fluent rabbit. And when they didn't find Frosty and Karen on the hill, Santa followed Frosty's pad in the snow to the greenhouse. But when they got inside, a terrible sight at their right. Oh! 
cold. They were too late. Too late? Why, nonsense. Oh, don't cry, Karen. Frosty's not gone for good. You see, he was made out of Christmas snow, and Christmas snow can never disappear completely. <laughs> oh, it sometimes goes away for almost a year at a time and takes the form of spring and summer rain. But you can bet your boots that when a good jolly December wind kisses it, <laughs> it'll turn into Christmas snow all over again. Yes, but... He was my friend. <laughs> Just watch. Wait a minute. I want that hat, and I want it now. Don't you dare touch that. And just what are you going to do about it? If you so much as lay a finger on the brim, I'll never bring you another Christmas present as long as you live. Never? Never. No more trick cards or magic balls or... No more anything. Oh, that's not fair. I mean, we evil magicians have to make a living too. You go home and write, I am very sorry for what I did to Frosty a hundred zillion times. And then maybe, just maybe, mind you, you'll find something in your stocking tomorrow morning. Uh, a new hat, maybe? Oh, yes, sir. Goodbye, everyone. Sorry to lose and run, but I've got to get busy writing. Busy, busy, busy. <laughs> Come on, Frosty. We're all waiting for you. Happy birthday! Christmas parade. 